How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to a very special video. Today we are announcing the winners, all five of them, to that uh, 7,000 subscriber milestone giveaway. We're gonna be giving away a ton of stuff in today's video, a bunch of play mats, some legendary, some phantasmal footsteps, MetaZoo promos, decks, all of that kind of stuff, and it's all gonna be, you know, kicked off with a huge Q&A session. Here I have my good old trusted phone, and I'm literally just gonna be reading the comments uh, down this list. So we're gonna go for maybe like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes or something like that. And then, um, you know, near the end, I'll announce the winners for that giveaway. I've already kind of chosen them, so I already know who they are. They're also on this phone here. And um, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, over 300 people entered. This is the most that anyone, you know, this is the most that I've had for a giveaway. Like most number of people who have entered and I expect this to, you know, get bigger over time. I've already been planning out my 10,000 subscriber giveaway and that one is going to be insane. Like actually insane. Um, but let's get started with this one. I'm definitely not going to get to all like 300 plus comments here, 382 comments here. Um, but let's just get started, man. We're just going to kind of go down the list and we're just going to, you know, do that. It's not in any particular order. So like this one's from two weeks ago. There's another one from a week ago. Um, so it just says, um, oh, I do like this one actually. I, I've read all the comments, by the way. I haven't commented on them or hearted a lot of them, but I've read all of the comments. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I, I really, really appreciate it. Especially, I really, really appreciate the kind words. It it truly means a lot to me, especially now that I'm going like full time with Red Zone Rogue. And that's actually what this first question is. So this first one kind of ties in to all of that. It says, how are you able to juggle a full-time job, your hobbies and content creation? I feel like I barely have enough energy to open Magic Arena and play a few games after work, let alone brew decks, create content, manage social media accounts, close biz business deals, etc., etc. You know, I'll be honest, man, it is um, just a lot of hard work. It's a grind. You just got to keep at it. You got to keep that passion and that fire burning. Otherwise, you're gonna get you're gonna get burnt out. And for me personally, you know, it, my goal and you know. As, as a person, when I set a goal, I will do everything I can to achieve that goal. And my goal was to just make one video every other day. Doesn't matter what the video is, as long as I think it's interesting and worth it, I will put out a video every other day. And even working full time, I was able to achieve that. Uh, now that I'm going um, full time Red Zone Rogue and not having a, a retail job, um, we're gonna keep that pace. But I'm gonna try to improve the quality of the videos and that kind of stuff. Maybe we'll have more videos occasionally, but I don't wanna drown y'all in videos. I know people have time, I respect your time, and I don't expect you to watch, you know, if I put a, a video or two every single day, I don't expect everyone to watch that. So um, it's really hard. It's really tough. And for a long time, it's a very like thankless kind of thing where you put in all of your passion and you're not getting a lot out of it. And you know, the, the few lucky ones like myself, and even though the, the channel's like not super big, I do consider myself very lucky and fortunate um, to be in the position where I am, working with Channel Fireball, um, having all these other sponsors and um, affiliates and my amazing patrons. So it's just a lot of hard work. You just gotta, you just gotta keep at it. A lot of the time you're just, you're sacrificing um, other things that you would like to be doing. So you know, many times where I like, you know, oh, I could be playing whatever brand new game came out or finishing whatever game. Well, instead of doing that, I do my content, you know, just, just, you just gotta keep at it. It's tough. Um, this one says by um, Lavalie Day it says, if you were to have a fab hero created in your name, what class would it be, and what would it do? Potentially a very involved question. Yeah, um, I actually made some flesh and blood cards. It's an old video; not a whole lot of people watched it, but I made like an assassin class, and I and I did that. I'm honestly not sure what class I would be, um, but I would be so honored to have a flesh and blood card even vaguely reference the channel um that would be amazing that would be amazing um i'm not really sure i've always you know in, in rpgs and that kind of stuff i always uh play like a, a magic user like a, a sorcerer a wizard in my current dnd campaign <clears throat> current dnd campaign i am playing a um a moon elf a shadow sorcerer so it'd probably be some kind of wizard or a shadow sorcerer or something like that Though maybe a Rune Blade, oh, maybe just maybe just Rune Blade, man. Maybe just Rune Blade. It's my favorite class. Um, Rune Blade and Ranger are my favorite classes. Um, that's one. It's gonna be one of those. It's gonna be one of those. Um, and the 
the mechanics, it would be very aggro focused. Because as a player, I like very mid-range aggro style stuff. I'm not really a control player as much as I am um, aggro type stuff, especially for Flesh and Blood. Now this one says, um, I'm just wondering really, have you ever considered making a channel about one game considering algorithm and, thing algorithm and things like that? And go to cocktail, mojito, dirty mojito. Um, but the second channel thing, I've done that actually a couple times. I actually, not a lot of people know this, but I had a second Magic the Gathering channel for a while that did okay, actually. I have like an Oathbreaker video, like a how to play Oathbreaker video um, over on that channel that has like 40,000 views or something like that. But um, I just kind of like lost my passion for Magic and I just didn't want to didn't want to continue with that. And Red Zone Rogue is a place where I can just do whatever I'm passionate about, even though we focus mostly on Flesh and Blood, because, you know, Flesh and Blood is my favorite game. We talk about a bunch of other card games here, too, like, you know, MetaZoo, uh, We Cross here. We talk, we talk a lot, you know, a bunch of stuff here, because Red Zone Rogue is basically, um, for the longest time, it was just like on my passion project. And, um, you know, as a passion project, I'm here to share with you my passions. But I wanted to focus it, you know, I wanted to keep it more focused uh, as of late. And so we're going to be like 90%, 95% flesh and blood, and then, you know, 10% other stuff. Um, so I found that it's not good to split your audience, I guess is the answer to that. I don't find it's good to split your audience. Um, this one says, it's an, it's an overwhelming feeling being able to do YouTube for a living for sure. Yeah. Um, what's my favorite alcoholic drink? Um... I'm going to say just rum in general, but uh, mojito or like a rum and coke. Um, a, a top shelf spiced rum with Mexican coke. Yo, that's that's where it's at. Um, when, did, when did you realize how awesome Fab is? Dude, like shortly after I got my hands on it. Um, if you go back way early 2020, I got, I got flesh and blood pretty early on. And um, after I played with my partner Robin... Um, and she actually liked the game, and she typically doesn't like competitive card games, but she actually liked it. I was like, you know, how did, what did you think of it? And she's like, oh, I didn't hate it. And for her, saying, I didn't hate it, means she actually really liked it. And so I knew it was a winner. I knew it was a winner. I was already in love with the game. I love the art style. I love the flavor. I love, like, the, the whole, like, aesthetic and feel of it. But just seeing someone like her being like, you know, she likes it. Um, and someone who's not really a competitive gamer at all um, was a huge sign. It was a huge, huge sign for me. Um, let's see, this one says, they're from Italy. What's my favorite type of pasta? Spaghetti, penne. Um, it's actually tortellini. I love tortellini, dude. Uh, I love the little tiny, they're like little tiny stuffed pastas. And you can stuff them with like prosciutto, you can stuff them with cheese, like whatever you want. I love tortellini. Uh, other than that, I really do like penne, actually. Um, like a baked penne. Uh, penne, like uh, al forno. Yeah, dude. I actually eat a lot of pasta. Um, my girlfriend Robin, once again, um, really likes pasta. So we, we eat a lot of pasta. Um, this one says... A lot, a lot of people are just saying congratulations. You know what? Thank you so much. It, it, it means a lot. Uh, this one says, I love watching your videos. Not only is the, the content great, but I appreciate the great lighting. Thank you. I try hard. I try hard for the lighting, even though sometimes with the glasses, it makes it a little difficult. Um, my question is, how do you store and organize your cards in a way that makes sense and easy to build decks? Um, do I build my decks digitally or go through a binder? So what I do normally for Flesh and Blood is I go to FabDB and uh, I build the deck there to kind of prototype it, just to kind of get my ideas out, and then I build it in person. I do have several binders of rares, and then I have like my good binder of like super rares and higher. Um, I have multiple, I have, I have so many flesh and blood cards these days. Um, so I have multiple like super rare higher binders that I go through and pick the cards out of. Um, so that's basically how I do it. For all my bulk, I sort it in what I call the Tower of Power, which is actually right here next to the camera. It is one, two, three, four, four, three by four BCW kind of like cases that just have a bunch of these really long boxes in them. And so like this one here, I'll just take it out because it's really close. This one is a what? They're all 800 count. So they're all these 800 count. I do label them. So this, this, this is my We Cross foils. Um, most of it is flesh and blood, but I do have some other stuff in there too. So yeah, I hope that is a satisfactory answer. 
I do kind of like plan out my decks on FabDB first. Uh, this one says, oh, I recognize, I recognize a lot of these people, uh, a lot of you folks out there uh, who comment on a lot of my videos. Once again, I, I appreciate it so much. Um, I honestly think you made a wise decision to focus your passion, to focus on your passion on the channel. You know what? I agree. I agree. That's not really a question, but I agree. Follow your passion. And it's super cliche, but people say like, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. And you know, it's the truth. And it's not easy for a lot of people. It took me years to get here. Many years, thankless years of creating like force of will content, a bunch of stuff on YouTube, but it took a long time to get here. And I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. So just try to find something that you, that you love. I, I really do appreciate that. Um, in the short, what about the game fascinates you and why do you like it so much? Greetings from Berlin. There's a lot of folks out there from Germany. Shout out to all of the, the red, you know, members of the rogues gallery from Germany. Um, I'm actually, you know, part German myself. You can tell by my very pale skin. My last name is a German last name actually. So, um, I'm just, I'm, like I kind of already talked about this. I really love the style. I love the flavor. I love the grittiness. I love how it's not afraid to just go there. Um, it's one of the reasons why people liked Game of Thrones a lot when it first came out. It's kind of like that in a sense, but with less, you know, nudity. <laughs> with, ne with less nudity, it's a little bit more tasteful. It's, it's not as shameless as um, Game of Thrones. But if you want shameless, you know, here's some Wee Cross. Um, but yeah, I just, I just love the flavor of the game. It really, really resonates for me as a, a longtime fan of Tolkien and that kind of fantasy. I really love it. It, it. It's great. And it's not just kind of like a cheap knockoff on that kind of stuff. It's doing its own thing. And I think it's doing it really, really, really well. Um, what is your favorite TCG that was discontinued? I love, and I'm going to be doing this in a, a, a bigger capacity later. I'm gonna do a full video on this. I love dead card games. And my favorite dead card game of all time is Dragoborn. I'm pointing to Dragoborn here. This one's Genesis. This one's Dragoborn. I love Dragoborn. So I'm going to be doing a full video retrospective on Dragoborn. I have a full set of Dragoborn, a full um, non-foil set of every single card in the entire game, um, including the, the very rare, hard to find uh, final set, Reckoning of Ashir. I do have a box of that over here. It's opened up. I opened them all, all up. Um, you, you can watch that. I have those videos, old, old videos, like 2018 or whatever, 2019, 2018 videos. Um, but I love Dragoborn. It's a fantastic game. And I'm um, slowly converting some of my content creator friends over to Dragoborn. So, um, yeah. But that said, you should watch DM Armada because he may be doing some Dragoborn stuff. Um, Azalea or Bolton? Which one do you say has a better chance in a competitive environment? Well, I mean, I'll be honest, man. Bolton. But I love Azalea. Azalea is my favorite character to play. She's just so much fun, like, knocking the arrows, firing them off. It's, like, really flavorful. It's just a lot of fun. It feels like you're doing a lot of stuff. It feels like um, going through the motions. It's very rhythmic. I don't know. I, I love playing the Ranger class. Bolton's probably better competitively, though. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be disingenuous to say he, to say Azalea's better than Bolton. But um, I like Azalea more. Um, let's see. It's been, it's been amazing to have been watching you for almost a year. Yo, cheers, man. And seeing the well-deserved success. Um, do you own a Shiana and do you have a build for her? I don't. So there's only three cards in the entire game that I don't own. I have Ophidia, Arc Knight Shard, and Shiana. I own at least a, a full playset of every single other card in the entire game. In some cases, many, many playsets. And I've made it a point to get multiple playsets of Enlightened Strike and Command and Conquer just so I can have them in multiple decks. Um, I have every other card, every other Fabled. Those are just the ones I'm missing. So... I have Aphidia, Arc Knight Shard, and I do not have a Shiana. Hoping to get the Arc Knight Shard and the Shiana when Crew Unlimited comes out. So I'm going to be doing some openings of that on the channel here too. Maybe some uh, sponsored openings too. Um, plan on opening your own merch online store? Yes! I'm going to be opening a Red Zone Rogue merch store. We're going to have um, t-shirts with a design done by the official like Red Zone Rogue artist. Um, her name is Lizzie. I'm not going to tell you her online thing because I don't know if she wants people to know, um, but she's a local friend of mine here, um, really nice person, and she did the channel avatar. And um, we're doing a playmat, and there's a design in the playmat that I think is going to be an awesome shirt for me. So shirts for me, a little tangent, Let me put my phone down for a second. Shirts for me, I'm pretty picky when it comes to it. I don't like shirts with a lot of words and like 
you know, proclamations and stuff, but I do like cool logos and pictures without being too crazy. So like right here, I'm wearing my Junji Ito uh, Tommy shirt, right? Because I love um, Junji Ito and Tommy is one of my favorite characters from anything ever. She's a beautiful monster and I love that kind of archetype, man. Beautiful monster. I love horror and so I, lo I love Tommy. So um, that's gonna be the kind of flavor for the shirt. It's gonna be the kind of shirt where you can wear, where if someone saw it, you'd be like, oh, that looks cool. But not like, oh, is that a streamer? Is that like a YouTuber shirt? It's not gonna be obvious that it's like a YouTuber shirt. It's not gonna have like my face on it or anything like that. I think that's a little, it's not my style, right? Um, so it would fit in with my style. Um, and obviously I'm, you know, biased. I think my style is cool. So yes, we're gonna be opening an online store. We're gonna sell shirts, the official Red Zone Rogue playmat, another playmat that I'm gonna talk about in an upcoming video. Maybe it's the video before this, maybe it's one after this, but that one's an officially licensed crossover product between Red Zone Rogue and another card game. And I'm super excited for that with an artist from that card game. And I am just absolutely pumped. It's gonna be awesome. And it's gonna have like spooky stuff. It's gonna be sweet. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be opening up that store in the next month or two. Um, how did you find out about all these cool TCGs before they came popular? I just kind of like keep up with the industry basically. I have friends who work in the industry. I have friends who are store owners, especially after starting Red Zone Rogue, um, you know, I'm friends with Jason from Deck Edge, Jim from Fab TCG Cards. Um, there's a bunch of people from across the industry, and um, you know I'm friends with some artists, and um, you know I just kind of keep up with this kind of stuff. It also helps that a lot of people out there are like, "Hey, check out this game." That's how I found out about MetaZoo. People, when it was back still in Kickstarter, people were like, "Check out this game. Check, check it out. I think you'd like it." And if there are any new games, by the way, uh, that you think I should check out, let me know, and I will probably check them out. Um, so yeah, I just kind of keep up with everything with the industry. There's a couple websites that I like to use. Um, if you like Japanese card games and that kind of stuff and you want them in English, then, um, Potomac distribution actually almost carry, like carries almost all of like the Japanese card games. Um, so they're going to be carrying like We Cross, they carry Vanguard, they used to carry like Buddy Fight, Dragoborn, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I do. Just, I just keep up with that kind of stuff. Um, what got me into TCGs in the first place? Uh, one of my friends when I was like four years old had some magic cards that his brother gave him and he gave me a couple, including Kil'jorin Dead and Zephyr Falcon. And I fell in love with the art. So Magic the Gathering and the art, because one of my friends when I was like five or four gave it to me. I've been playing Magic since 1995, man. Um, since like fourth edition. So I mean, card games have been a huge part of my life and it's like literally a dream come true to be able to do this full time. So yeah. Um, I see several classic TCGs in your background. Hell yeah. Um, please give us a top three or five of your favorite classic TCGs out of print. So Dragoborn is number one. I also really, really love Middle Earth right here. It has amazing, absolutely brilliant artwork. One of my favorites of all time. I have a couple of videos on the channel already. And then a third one, probably can barely see it. We have some um, Wyvern here. These are all sealed boxes, by the way, um, including some sealed Middle Earth right here. I'm gonna sealed a wizard set and a white hand set. So I'm, I'm gonna say those are my, my top three. Dragoborn, which is like a Japanese game, and then uh, two really, really old games from the early 90s, Wyvern and uh, Middle Earth CCG. But there's a ton of others, man. It's really hard to pick. There's a, there's a ton of others, because I have over here, I have like the X-Files card game. I have the Cyberpunk card game. I have a game called Wars. I have just a ton of stuff. I love card games, man. I absolutely love card games. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this one says, I see you have Warlord. Oh yeah, I forgot about Warlord. Yeah, Warlord here. And I also forgot about Legend of the Five Rings. You can't see it. I have a bunch of like Legend of the Five Rings tins back here too. Beautiful game, absolutely beautiful. Warlord is awesome. It is right here. Warlord is rad. It's kind of like D&D &D style. It's really cool. Um, did you have a favorite faction or Warlord? So, um, I played the... It was like a red border. I forget. Oh man, I forget what it was called. My brother played the Nothrog, like the orcs. And I played the one with a red border. I want to say like, it's not Malkavian because that's, that's from World of Darkness. I do like Vampire the Masquerade. Um, I, I'm a, personally I'd be a Tremere from Vampire the Masquerade. Um, but uh, I don't remember what they were. There was like the, the red ones. The character, I got a starter deck and the character was like a wizard guy. He was like an evil wizard guy. Uh, yeah, this guy says he likes Nothrogs. Yeah, my brother played Nothrogs. 
Um, how do you financially plan for yourself once moving out of a consistent employment pay? So um, I actually still have a consistent employment pay, but it's not through retail. So I'm sponsored by Channel Fireball. I make videos for Channel Fireball and they pay me for them. Um, so I mean, I'm gonna be very clear here. I'm not gonna tell you how much I'm making, but between that and between Patreon, between my YouTube ad revenue and between all of the sponsors and everything, it all adds up to what I would consider to be a somewhat livable wage. Um, it's a little bit more than I was making doing retail. Let me just say that. Um, and also my partner, Robin, has a fantastic job. So I'm able to support myself, pay for all this stuff. She doesn't have to pay for anything. Um, I pay for all, like my food, I pay for like everything. We, we split some things. Um, we have a really good, we have a really good thing going. She and I have been together for a very, very long time, over 10 years. Um, so we have a really good thing going and financially speaking, we, we kind of keep our things, you know, a little bit, a little bit separate. But um, yeah, it's because I have um, amazing supportive patrons I have Channel Fireball, and then I have my YouTube ad revenue and that kind of stuff. YouTube ad revenue is not a lot. That one, I don't think I can tell you. I don't think YouTube lets you tell, tell you. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot. A um, few hundred bucks at most a month. Let me just put that much. Um, but everything adds up to be to be consistent. I found, and you know, a lot of people tell you this, you know, diversifying your income sources can lead you to success when you are working independently. Um, yeah. Diversify income sources. Um, any tips on Prism versus Bravo matchup in Class Constructed? I honestly don't have a lot of experience with that. I imagine you want to dominate, man. With, with Bravo, you probably just want to dominate. If you're playing Prism, it's going to be really hard. Um, I think doing a strategy where you build a lot of um, tokens and attack with the tokens, I think that's probably going to be what you want to do with Prism versus Bravo because they're going to be able to pop your um, pop your big angel attacks or maybe save up for a really really big angel attack where you can use like your um dream weavers and that kind of stuff to do like a really big one so like a phantasmoclasm with a phantasmify and dream weavers something like that so it's big and they can't really do anything about it though i would probably save dream weavers for um herald of erudition so you can draw those cards that that's my play play the long game play the long game because i know they want to play the long game um, wasn't it kind of daunting to start content creation full time? Yes. Yes. Did you need to work up the courage to do it or did you just decide to do full send? Um, it got to the point where I realized I was making more money doing this than my retail job. I mean, like I said, I'm being very transparent here. I woke up and I was just like, you know, I had like a kind of a bad day at work doing retail. Retail sucks, man. Retail sucks. And I was like, why am I even doing this? And I looked at the, my finances. I'm like, why am I even doing this? There's no reason. Um, so... I talked with my partner, talked with Robin, and um, I was like, I think we can do this. And so, here I am. So, yeah. Did you ever get DQ'd in a tournament and why? No, I've never been DQ'd in a tournament. In fact, no one's even ever called the judge on me. I would like to think that I have very, very good tournament etiquette. I'm a pretty approachable person, you know? You watch the channel, you might you might see this is, this is how I am. And um, I like to just chat. You know, people, some people, you know, I can kind of get vibes off of people too, right? So I grew up and I was very introverted and I kind of like reversed, you know, as I got older, but I can kind of get the vibes if someone is introverted and if they're the kind of people who don't like to talk. And if they don't, I'm just like, hi, my name is Kellen. I'm your round, you know, four opponent or whatever. Um, I hope we have a good game, blah, blah, blah. I do pay attention to, I have come across some cheaters and I have called out some cheaters before. This is in magic, but I've never personally been DQ'd. Um, pro tip. Pro tip, I have had friends who got DQ'd for really dumb reasons. Re-sleeve your freaking decks because if you use old sleeves, you can get called out for marking your cards if some of the sleeves are damaged and you can tell them the, tell the sleeves apart, right? So if you have one card that that's, has a damaged sleeve, people could say that it's marked. So um, you could get DQ'd for that. So keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Re-sleeve your deck. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video or maybe it comes out around here. But really exciting video actually. Um, what class would you like to see next in Light and Shadow? Honestly, I don't think we'll be seeing Light and Shadow for a while. I think we're going to do like a tour of Wraith until we see more Light and Shadow again. Or, or we'll see Light and Shadow with the next supplementary set. Which could be actually pretty soon. Um, I just pulled my hair back. It's a little, it's a little hot in the studio today. Um, they would like to see Ninja. I think Ninja would be sweet. Like a Shadow Ninja. Kind of sounds like an assassin. Hmm. 
Light Wizard. I thought Light Wizard would be really cool. Uh, there's a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, light Guardian, like a very angelic Light Guardian. That could be really cool too. I think we could actually see some Light Guardians in the future. Um, so, yeah. Um, what is the coolest place you've ever traveled to? I have not got to travel a lot, which is a, which is a huge bummer. I would love to travel to Europe, uh, to France, to Germany, to England. I would love to go to Japan. Um, as you can see, I, there's a lot of stuff here that I like that are from Japan. Um, well, maybe you can't see them. <laughs> you can't see them. I have some anime figures up here. Um, I don't know. I've been to, I've met some people. You know, I've met some really cool people. I met some people in the film industry. I met some famous directors. I actually went to school for film and I got to meet some of them when I talked to them. I met the director of photography for like the first couple Saw films. He's a really cool dude. Um, I got to meet like, yeah, I got, anyway, anyway. Uh, so the place that I've been, oh, Dinosaur National Monument. I was really into dinosaurs as a kid and I love going to like museums and that kind of stuff. So, you know, going to the Natural History Museum in Denver was really cool. Um, Dinosaur National Monument was really cool. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd like to travel a lot more. Um, this one says, just stumbled across your channel. Hey, welcome. And I'm um, excited about getting into more fab content. Yeah, cheers. If you could create your own hero or class, what would it be and why? I've already mentioned this, but I made a video um, going over my own custom assassin class. You check that out on the channel. Just type in like assassin or something in the search, the red zone rogue search bar. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I use the coin mechanics for it. So you could like use the coins, banish the coins, and then you get like bonuses when you play stuff. Uh, this one says, I'm trying to convince my LGS to start doing fab events to start new players. What format do you think is better to attract new people? Probably Blitz for two reasons. The first one is, is that there are Blitz, um, you know, little decks. And these are only like 12 bucks and they're really easy to get. And so it's a really, really easy entry point for people looking to get into Flesh and Blood. Um, and the other reason is that Blitz games are just quicker. So... Blitz, I would say. Classic Constructed is something you can transition into once people kind of get a grasp of the game and they really want to sink their teeth into something a little bit more meaty. So, yeah, I would say Blitz. Uh, this one says, what's the most difficult parts about being a content creator and what are the remedies? Um, starting out is the hardest part because it's gonna be, for like 99.9% .9 of people, you're just gonna be grinding and getting no views, just video after video, and you just have to stick with it. You need the fortitude to just stick with it and get better. That is like my number one thing. Most of the times that I've heard people, when they get big, when they like get big on YouTube or Twitch, it's because they just kind of grinded it out. They were, they put themselves in the right place. So wait, they grinded it up so they could put themselves in the right place and be there when something came along. So they could be at the right place at the right time kind of thing. And you know, I think there's some something to be said with that for Red Zone Rogue and Flesh and Blood. You know, I was into the game way before it got popular and you know, already had videos out about it. And so it was really easy to kind of like transition into, you know, doing more content about Flesh and Blood since it's a game that I already loved and that kind of stuff. I, I think that's a big part of it. Um, but just keep at it. Find something you love. Be truly passionate about it if you are passionate about it. Um, and then just just keep keep at it. Because if you're in this for the wrong reasons, if you're in this just for views or fame or money, there's a huge chance that you you are going to fail. If you don't actually care about what you're doing and you're not passionate about it, um, you're, you're probably just going to fail. So... Yeah, I mean, that's what that's the motivation behind me making videos, too. It's because I love this stuff, dude. I love card games. That's why I make videos about them, because I love them. It's not for views or for money. The fact that I'm able to do this full time is a dream because it's something that I love so much. So that's that's my advice on that. Um, a lot of people just saying congratulations. You know, once again, I, I appreciate it. What do you expect to see in the top eight for the Calling Vegas? Um, chain? <laughs> We're gonna see chain, um, probably chain, maybe a guardian deck, um, maybe a random warrior deck. I think it's gonna be maybe prism too. I think it's gonna be something like that. There's maybe a class or two that I'm forgetting, but uh, I'm probably gonna be bringing an off meta deck for that anyway, or maybe I'll just bring chain, who knows. Um, let's see, follow those dreams. Yeah, man, what's my favorite concert? Oh, dude. I've been to a lot of concerts. If you couldn't tell by the long hair, I love music. I love metal. I've actually been recently beginning, 
I've actually recently been getting into some rap, though I'm not really into really into it that much. Um, the best concert I ever went to was actually not even a metal concert. One of my favorite bands of all time, The Decemberists, um, actually local here in Portland, Oregon. I believe the lead singer lives in the same city that I live. And um, I don't live exactly in Portland. I live in like a small city out, outside of Portland. And um, they put on an amazing show. They sounded fantastic. They had a lot of like cool things on stage. Um, they, it was just really good. The Decemberists are fantastic. They are great musicians and I really, really respect that. Another one that I saw that really blew me away. So my partner Robin and I, uh, we went, this is back when we lived in California years ago. And we went to something called Not So Silent Night that was in Oakland. It was on the Oakland arena. And it was like a bunch of big name bands. So like Kings of Leon were there and they were fantastic. Queens of the Stone Age were there and they were terrible. Um, AFI was there, I think, and they were actually pretty good. Um, uh, Arctic Monkeys were there and they, they were also pretty terrible, which is a bummer because I, I like some of their stuff. But one band was there that I was like, I completely was like, they're just a pop group thing and they, they kind of suck. They just are one hit wonders. And it's called Capital Cities. And they blew me away, man. They were so good. There was a dude who had like a horn. I think he swapped between a, a trumpet and like a French horn. And um, it was really impressive. And I, after that, I went and got their album. And it's really good. They have some weird songs, man. It's really weird, like 80s synth pop-ish vibes. It's, it's weird stuff, but I really like, I really like the Capital Cities, man. Um, they're like really popular song, like uh, I Can Lift You Up or whatever. That's like the worst song on the album, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go with that. Best metal concert? A Monomarth, dude. A Monomarth is so good. I would love to also see Blind Guardian. I would also love to see Dark Tranquility. Dark Tranquility is my favorite band. I um, would love to see them. So yeah, there's that. I've also seen, um, for rap, I did mention rap. I have seen, been to some rap concerts. They're all like nerdcore rap. So MC Chris, I saw MC Chris before on a really small venue in uh, Eugene, Oregon, and it was awesome. Um, he had everyone, he had the audience pretend we were zombies and then he was like shooting everyone, like fake shooting them. I don't know. It was, it was cool. It was really fun. Um, what classes do you want most in flesh and blood? New classes? Bard. <laughs> I want to see, oh, no, no, no. Scratch that. Alchemist. I want to see Alchemist. Um, this one says, you hit 10k in no time. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> Uh, do you have a question? Uh, do you have a question on what you hope to see with the game in the future, like PVE mode or anything like that? Um, I would love to see PVE. Um, in a video that I have coming up, we're talking to a former Legend Story Studios employee, and he actually kind of talks about PVE a little bit. So stay tuned for that. But I think PVE would be really fun. Be really fun. I think it's a little bit more involved than people thought too, because there was like a PVE thing that they did at an event. And it was just kind of like a beat up the car kind of thing, but it was a little bit more involved than just dealing damage. The car like did stuff back to you, which I think is really cool. So stay tuned for that video too. Um, what deck are you thinking of running for the calling? <laughs> um, maybe it's either gonna be Azalea, Viscerai, or Chain. Do I wanna win? Probably gonna bring Chain, but I don't know, maybe it might be doing some other stuff. Uh, question about MetaZoo. Um, do you think it'll expand the lore to other countries and regions? Yes. I know they're, they're for a fact they're going to be doing that. They're going to be going to Japan. And I think that's going to be one of the first places they go to. And I know they want to expand throughout the entire world. So I think Mezu has a ton of potential. Um, and that's just one of the reasons why. Uh, TCG fatigue. Do you ever feel TCG fatigue or just one? Or you just one with the heart of the cards? Um... Let me say that again. Do you ever feel TCG fatigue or are you just one with the heart of the cards? Um, I don't really feel TCG fatigue. Sometimes I feel fatigue about certain games, um, but overall, no, I, I just love card games. Even if I don't like one, I can go to another. It's like if you're really into movies or if you're really into anime or something like that, you know you can get sick of like a type of it, but you can still find something to enjoy. And for me, that, that's what card games are. Even if I'm not feeling great about like physical card games, I can always go play like some single player um, card game like Vault of the Void or Shadowverse, play that by myself, or like Hearthstone Adventure Mode or whatever. Um, so, yeah, not really, not really. Uh, let's see. What card besides Sonata Arcanic would you turn into a full play mat? Um, 
That's hard to say. That's actually really hard to say. I already have like a Viscerai playmat. Um, oh, um, there's a bunch of Illusionist cards that I would love to have playmats on. So like Phantasmify and the uh, Phantasmal, um, the, I have a print <laughs> right here actually. I need to go set it up. This one. Give me a playmat of this. I love it. It's beautiful. She looks like Storm from X-Men, doesn't she? She's awesome. This one's asking about deck building techniques and tips. I've actually already did a video about that, so I'm not gonna count this one. Just, um, I think it's called like how much pitch or something like that. Just go search that in the Red Zone Rogue search bar. Um, congrats on con success in quitting retail. Wasted nine years of your life in retail. Dude, I feel for you, man. Retail like sucks your soul out, man. Um, what equipment do you use to film and edit your content? Okay, cool. So we can end on like a content creation one. So I actually use a, this is a Canon right here. So this is a Canon Rebel SL2. And in my opinion, it's one of the best DSLRs on the market right now. It's kind of old, but it's also a little bit less expensive because of that. I think I paid six or $700 for mine when I bought it. Maybe a little bit less than that. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but I'd use a Canon Rebel SL2. I used Canons when I was in film school. I'm a pretty big fan of Canon cameras in general. I think they have a really good um, picture quality. Uh, for editing, I use Premiere Pro. Um, for a mic, uh, this one is actually a lav mic. Oops, I bumped it. So I have a little lav mic, a little, little lapel mic. Um, but I also have a Rode mic that sometimes I put on top of the camera. I think the, the lav mic gets a little bit better sound because it feels like, like you're closer, but the, um, the Rode mic is, is all right too. And so yeah, Premiere Pro, and then I use um, the mic. Oh, I also use Audacity too to edit it. Uh, Audacity is free and it's fantastic. So get Audacity for your, all of your um, sound editing needs. I don't typically have to, but sometimes I do. All right, so now let's get down to the winners of the giveaway here. So the grand prize winner, the winner of this Phantasmal Footsteps. We have Phantasmal Footsteps here, if I can get it better in focus. It's not that great in focus, but Phantasmal Footsteps, all of the Blitz decks, some excellent play mats, um, and just a bunch of other stuff. MetaZoo promos, um, Illuminaris, just a bunch of stuff to start out for Flesh and Blood and to start your collection on MetaZoo. So the winner for that is jcasper7777. I will have a, a picture of the name here. It's right here. Um, so what you have to do, by the way, is um, please, please comment on this video. If you've won, I will do a little heart thing and I will tell you where you can go to contact me. Um, to give me like your shipping address and then I will ship it to you. And so we're gonna have four other winners. So stay tuned, that was the grand prize winner. There are still four other winners, still four other winners here. So we have the Ira Playmat. So this is gonna be the, the really sweet Ira Playmat. This is Commissar Kane. So congratulations, Commissar Kane. You are winning that Ira Playmat. The Kano Playmat is gonna go to Devin Chen. And once again, should have all the, the names here. One of the Reinhar mats is going to go to Brandon Usher. And then the other Reinhar mat is going to go to Mark Wright. And so everyone here, congratulations. Um, Jay Casper, 7777, Commissar Kane, Devin Chen, Brandon Usher, and Mark Wright. Please comment using that same account in this video. And I will tell you um, how to contact me. It'll probably be either through Twitter or through um, Facebook. So yeah, congratulations. Thank you so much for watching this all. Um, I didn't get to like not even half, not even a portion of the comments, uh, the questions. So, you know, I, I appreciate that. We might do another Q and A in the future. Maybe we'll do like a live stream or something. I don't even know if people would even want to watch that, but um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. It, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. The road to 10K is is already upon us. We're almost uh, halfway to 8,000. And then I think like after you hit 8,000, man, it's just like, you're just riding it, man. You're just riding it to 10K. And once we get to 10K, we are gonna have an awesome giveaway, a really, really awesome giveaway with multiple, 
multiple spicy legendaries and some other stuff too. So that's gonna be awesome. Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any friends out there who are into card games, especially like Flesh and Blood, MetaZoo, or even We Cross here, um, please, I would love it if you would share the channel with them. And, um, you know, once again, just, just thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm rambling now. <laughs> I'm rambling now. Um, have a good day, everyone, and I will see you next time for some more card game content. See you later.